After five months of work, I present to you the most detailed and comprehensive breakdown of the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer on the internet. So, without further ado, here are 500 things you missed in the GTA 6 trailer. Starting off, we first find ourselves a commercial plane with much more defined smoke than the linear smoke trails we had in previous Grand Theft Auto titles. We can also notice that there will finally be volumetric clouds in GTA 6, similar to those in Red Dead Redemption 2. Unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, however, clouds now take different forms as spotted throughout the trailer. The tall radio tower seen in this scene is based off of the WTVYTV tower in Florida. Looking out to the city distance, we notice that there are at least twice as many buildings than there is of the city skyline of Los Santos. Weather, specifically the sun, is much more realistic with you being able to see it reflect across objects with differentiating intensities of light. Birds appear to have their own individual flight movements, which connects to Take Two's AI pattern that they have filed about a library of small building blocks for individual character movements. These blocks are combined in various ways to create a wide range of animations, which seems to be what we are seeing here. In the lake, we can find how the boat alongside the ripples of the water interact, being much more complex than what we currently have in GTA 5. Also, in the center of the screen, you can see dispersion from the sun. On the right side of the screen, you can find the prison that Lucia is in, as well as a wastewater treatment center in front of the prison. Far into the right center side of the scene, you see the Sunshine Skyway Bridge from Tampa Bay, Florida, recreated in this game. Looking at this bridge, you can find yourself some oil stains, Patriot Beer returning to the GTA franchise, and some birds on cables. On top of this, headlights are far more realistic with how they interact with the environment using global illumination. All in all, this area either seems to be the Florida Keys or a small city west of Vice City. Before we move on, however, I'd like to point out some funny graphical errors. This tree has some leaves floating independently, and on the far right, we find the same structure being duplicated three times. In this scene, we find ourselves some more examples of how realistic this game is going to be with the moss hanging from the wires of the prison Lucia is in, as well as shadows that can be seen on the floor moving. We know that this is specifically the prison is when you pause in the last frames of the scene, you can find a watchtower from the area. As you can see by the sun here, the sun rays appear to be going through the fence and tree by the intensity of the light, as well as the sun rays reacting to the pole realistically. Now here, we find ourselves in Lucia's cell. There are a lot of other details which hint about this that I'll talk about shortly after in the next scene, but mainly we know this because we find what are presumably Lucia's family photos on the right side of the screen. Anyways, this scene alone displays an extraordinary amount of detail from the global illumination technology discussed before. First off, you can see the sun rays visibly appearing from the outside, as well as in the window, an even more bright, blurry after image the window produces which we have yet to see in a GTA game. Something that's even more striking is that you can see that each individual pane is rendered differently from the street lamp appearing all chopped up. Back to discussing what's in the room as well as the rays mentioned before, there are also dust particles. The texture of Lucia's prison suit perfectly mimics real life and Lucia's body reflects to the window in front of her. Back again to the window, you can see how the ceiling is pulled in that the paint around the border is imperfect, adding a lot more realism to the intentional imperfections in this game. Also in the scene, the shadow of each paint is being projected onto the wall and Lucia's jumpsuit. Here we meet a woman named Stephanie, which we can see by her nameplate and her lanyard, which also details that she's staff of the Leonida Department of Correction if you squint hard enough. This is also hidden at Lucia's uniform, which reads the initials LDC, but more on that scene later. Stephanie's office has a motivational poster which reads, If you miss, there's also a shot for redemption, I think. Also in her office, you can find various photos of her with her close ones. Also, something else I found interesting is that I tried reverse image searching the drawing behind Lucia and it showed no results. If this doesn't already convince you about the insane attention to detail in this game or the fact that I've already written a 1000 word essay about the first 9 seconds in this trailer, I don't know what will. In the first frame of the scene already, we can find ourselves sea turtles, dolphins, a shark, and just incredible water simulation overall. It's crazy how you can see both the hills all the way at the bottom of the ocean while being able to see the waves at surface level at the same time. You can also see that this boat has its windows open, inferring that boats probably have adjustable parameters like with cars. Judging by how you can see the insides of these boats from the windows, we might too be able to steal them, or just hop aboard inside. When this tiny boat turns, we can see the water dispersed in another direction, inferring that each propeller is being taken into account in this game's physics. Here you can see a great example of the complexity of the shadows in GTA 6, with how the bird shadows interact with the water being blurry from the altitude of the birds as well as the shadows being distorted from the waves. Anyway, this beach is a clear example of how NPCs aren't scattered at seemingly random points in the game, like how GTA 5 did it. Some of them are congregated in groups while some of them are just individual goers at the beach. These beach umbrellas are from left to right, blue, yellow, and pink, the GTA 6 color palette. It seems that these umbrellas are also separated depending on hotel ownership, and you can see some ATVs running around the map. Now this absolutely mammoth-sized city has so many things to look at, it discombobulates me. Immediately, you can tell how massive the draw distance is, being less of a technical issue like in San Andreas where the draw distance was purposely fixed to a small chunk due to the limitations of that era, and now, a draw distance mimicking real-world atmosphere. Anyway, here you can spot a lot of hotels, apartments, and a lake. You can find towels being hung to dry on the balconies on one of these hotels, a helicopter landing platform on the blue building, meaning that there is a chance that this would be one of the GTA 6 online apartments, and a replica of the Lowe's Miami Beach Hotel. Up top, we see seaplanes becoming a prominent aircraft in the game, one of them being a Dodo, returning from Vice City from the Dildo Dodo mission, reading Y6 now we can 919, 919 being a parody of the Miami Club 1111, and there's a Maverick helicopter again returning from Vice City on the right. Just before this scene fades to black, a building is seen named Amalfi, whatever that can mean. Now, a close-up shot of the building we were just looking at with two planes flying by. Right off the bat, this is the first time we get to see a cloudless sky in the trailer, and 
and my god is that gradient beautiful. Way, way, way better sky than what we had in GTA 5. With that, glare is much more realistic and unlike in GTA 5 where it appeared to be very linear, two-dimensional, and only seems to shine once for each object, that is absolutely not the case for this game. For many of these hotels, you can see the interiors through most windows unlike in previous games. Some windows are partly covered, some kind of revealing, and some fully showing what's inside. Now, I'm going to predict that this isn't just some sort of parallax effect and that these buildings are actually enterable judging by the NPCs on top of this building right here. Using this, we can imply that people just come and go and aren't stuck in one location forever. And lastly, the building on the right is 500 Brick Hill. In my opinion, I feel like this may be the best executed scene in the trailer. If you told me before the GTA 6 trailer came out that this was a photo of Florida, I would fully believe you. This more rural wetland area is likely inspired by the Florida Everglades. We can tell that the atmospheric density is huge, showing an immense advance in fog and particle effects. Looking into the background, we can see that trees have less leaves on some sides rather than the other, instead of all of them looking like clones in GTA 5. Also something I noticed far off is just looking at how dark the clouds are respective to the sun. Now looking into the foreground, airboats are back, we can see that they can have multiple occupants, and is currently being controlled by Jason and Lucia. Lucia's hair blows in the wind of the airboat, as well as water spraying from the fan. Lastly, look at how as the scene moves, animals become responsive to vehicles and move out the way for them. More animals. Here you can spot a lot of foliage density, some deer, moss bouncing around the grass, and a huge gator lurking in the back. Also, there's some dark thing in the background which could be a bear of some sort. Something I'd like to point out is how Rockstar truly nailed cloudy weather with how some areas are brighter than others, corresponding to how the sun interacts with the landscape. Back to the alligators, notice how they're kind of camouflaged since I'm assuming you didn't notice them when you first saw the trailer. You think if you go by this wildlife without watching your step, an alligator would just attack you out of nowhere? That's something to think about. And yeah, judging by the amount of wildlife, there may be some sort of hunting or exotic animal trapping side quest, especially if this is a scene in the trailer. Which, because it's a scene in the trailer, that means that Rockstar likely wants to highlight the importance of animals being in this game. Finally, back to the beach, and there is a lot to talk about, but let me just get this out of the way first because you're all probably thinking about it. These jiggle physics are amazing. As shown by the scene, all NPCs have different behavioral patterns as aforementioned from the bird's movements in the first scene of the trailer. Everybody walks and acts differently, and everybody has different types of clothing, tattoos, skin tones, and even body types. The footsteps on the scene are genuinely insanely detailed, as well as the dust that gets kicked off. Also, it's really cool that sand will now interact with you, like how it is with this guy's feet. No, did you? Oh yeah, and there's also pets in this game. There's a guy seen taking a photo of someone's booty cheese, a couple posing for a picture, and a man wearing nothing but pink undies. There are also very complex things Rockstar has done in this scene, which are just brushed off as normal NPC interactions. Things such as spraying sunscreen on someone's ass and getting it to shine, passing a beer from one guy to another with no collision errors, and wait, are those AirPods in his ear? We're getting fruit pods in this game? Spotify integration? Who knows? Anyway, going off on more general things found here, shadows are very similar to real life being distorted with the terrain on the sand. Umbrella positions are randomized, not all being uniform like in previous GTA games, and these read Vice Beach and Soul Sisters. Maybe they are the names of the nearby hotels? And the trailer scale is now more realistic, looking slightly bigger than in GTA 5. Looking into the skies and distance above, we can already get another sense of how huge this draw distance truly is, with being able to see objects rendered on the other side of the beach. There's a random helicopter, a commercial plane, and the Sea Sparrow and Volatus returning back to the game. Which, at this point, there's definitely going to be some sort of increase on how much aviation we see in this game. Yet another aviation vehicle, haven't we seen like 10 of these already? God damn! This place is Port Vice City as seen above with the acronyms PVC. The ship in the background being unloaded shows how the dockyards are going to be more active and lively in this game. As a matter of fact, these ships are actually unloading containers for two legacy GTA shipping companies, Bilco and Jetson. This boat is called a Clarion and a Catamaran is located on the right. Here you can see water spray off the hull of the boat, something we haven't seen before, as well as the characters moving in time with the boat's natural motion and themselves reflecting upon the surface of the boat. Surprisingly, not a lot to say in a scene like this other than how Rockstar did a really great job in displaying their water mechanics in detail. Also, there are some radio towers in the distance. This part of the map right here is based off of the MacArthur Causeway in Miami-Dade, Florida. Focusing on the foreground, in this scene, Lucia and Jason are seen in the car, along with someone filming them from another vehicle, likely for Snapmatic as it is the main focus of the game. Lucia's clothes move more realistically than how clothes move in previous GTA games actually showing it animate like a cloth. The Grady Fury is also in this game. While the car's engine spews fire for a brief moment, it gets blurry and a noticeable glare is seen. Way out into the distance, the pickup truck holding boxes in front of the car swerves over in order to avoid the speeding vehicle. According to these signs over here, GTA 6's airport is called VCI Airport, there's a place called Stockyard Downtown down the road at Callan Boulevard, and there's a place called Kelly County which seems to be based off of the real life Monroe County. Now other stuff I missed. This right here is likely the Frost Art Museum, and finally in the distance you see a building with a hole in it, likely referencing Miami's Atlantis condo. Dominion. In this scene, we can see a lot more customization with cars, their paint jobs, wheels, suspension, etc., as well as a thriving, vivid outdoor area. Now, there is a lot I love about this scene, so let's just dig right in. This man has a 27 inch penis. Okay, on a real note, from the amount of car stickers in this trailer, and especially this really specific one, which does not seem to be from any brand in the game, which I'm assuming is about how many inches his car can jump. I don't know how these things work, sorry. It looks like we can have customizable car stickers in this game, similar to what we have in the logo editor on Social Club. This Vice City play having a flamingo on it, this motorcycle looking like it's a new variant of the Nagasaki.
Kawasaki Carbon RS and the trick of this car being open, inferring that it's a new way we can interact with vehicles. Oh, and hey, Lowriders also returns to this game. On the more nerdy note about the scene, car wheels have variable offset and camber, tire marks look gradually faded over time and don't just look freshly made, brake lights are much more realistic in the daytime, along with the overhead cables looking way more realistic coiled in sections near the pole. There are parking meters in this game as well as the sign that reads parking options with a diagram of a grenade. People lean by their cars instead of just awkwardly standing next to it. This puddle reflects this car's tire and there's very realistic looking garbage in this game. Make It Rain Mondays is likely a special event, and using this we can imply that Saturday nights may have more parties and street racers, with each bill being rendered individually with their own cloth-like physics. There's a guy wearing a shirt of a band named Dolls of Destruction, which may be a reference to another band with the same name. In the shirt, you can see some references to other GTA games as this band has performed in GTA 4's Liberty City and Alderney City, San Andreas' Los Santos, Las Venturas, and San Fierro, and Vice City's, well, Vice City. You can see right over here how Rockstar has nailed lens flares. This scene is just here to flex how well Rockstar would be able to imitate lifelike human characteristics in their game. The guy with the tank top here has visible scars on his cheek and chin as well as his clothes creasing as he moves. These guys' tattoos look faded as if they were done years ago, and their finger animations work flawlessly, which if you don't know game development is really hard to achieve. Also, it is absolutely insane how Rockstar was able to get metallics to shine so realistically. Doing it this effectively just shows how well Rockstar was able to pull off shading and dynamic range. For other things seen here, this seems to take place in a middle class neighborhood near a freeway. The bald head's blue bandana is tied in a manner similar to the Haitians in Vice City, and in the background is a billboard for Dignity Beer with a guy seen, well, wasted. This right here, man. This is wallpaper material, album cover material, gooning material even. This shit is just so beautiful and colossal, I don't know how to properly order what I'm seeing right now. So, this part of the map is based off of the West Venetian Causeway Bridge in Miami, Florida. As we can see here, tennis courts returns to the game, bike lanes run through the street, there's a huge variety of boats and yachts, not all the models being the same like the overbearing similarity we had in GTA 5. Also, interior lights of the boats are on from the inside, potentially adding to the theory that we'll be able to explore the interior of these boats rather than just being vessels that we can command, and that we could hopefully do more stuff within them. Here at the mill, we see the return of toll booths like in GTA 4. Over here, we see boat ramps, which can indicate that we may be able to lift and drop our boats into the water, which means boating may be a more important part of the game that we may have previously thought. We can see that even in the other side of this view, the cars spawn in fairly high quality very far away. Also in the distance, we see that the twin buildings to the left are based off of the blue and green diamond condos. And just in general, there are a lot of condos in this area anyway. And in the distance to the right, we can see the Flamingo Point building. And all the way over here, we have what's potentially the Versetti Mansion. I'm pretty curious what this geometric ass vehicle is doing in the bottom of the screen. Maybe it's a parody of the Cybertruck? The subtle lighting reflecting on the water from boats blending with the surrounding lighting of the atmosphere. I can't believe Rockstar went as far as to simulate light pollution. And it's seen primarily on the top left of the screen, buildings reflect on water, however, being cast blurrier and more distorted to where the waves are being projected. To top this all off, Rockstar K-O-O-K-E-D caught with the sky gradient, perfectly mimicking the rainbow-ish effect you'd see in sunsets on some occasions. This part of the map is based off Ocean Drive in South Beach, Miami, Florida. As we can see here, Vice City's Grotty Cheetah Classic, Fister Comet S2 Cabrio, and Yellow White Oceanic. From looking at the Cheetah, you can see that the Grotty has an updated emblem. And also, the Cheetah has the license plate of Leonida, Rockstar's Florida state name if I haven't mentioned that yet. Also, the license plate says Cheetah because it's, uh, overall, there are four buildings shown here. First building to the left is a bar with the name Neptune. By that is the Boardwalk Hotel, a rendition of Hotel Breakwater in Miami. In it, you see someone watching TV through their window. By that is the Ocean View Hotel, returning from Vice City. Hanging from Hotel Dixon, you can see a Peru and Haiti flag further signaling the cultures from Vice City, which is probably named after Rockstar's Dave Dixon, who made the Chilead mural. In this scene, we can see NPCs walking through traffic and getting out of cars naturally, overall making this place feel more alive and real. Another example of this realism is in the center of the scene, we see a man taking a photo of the Boardwalk Hotel with a woman boogieing beside him. There's a homeless person begging for change with an iguana on his shoulder with the hose avoiding him. Lastly, I'd like to mention how this is one of, if not the most realistic scenes we get in this trailer. To prove of it, before the trailer dropped, again, if I showed you this crop screenshot, you would have thought this was real life too. Out of all the scenes in this trailer, in my opinion, this was the only unnecessary one as there isn't much to show for what this game could display. The only notable thing is how packed NPCs are dancing next to each other with a wide variety of animations and no clipping of any kind. Yet again, there's another example of a lens flare in this game and also another example of vegetation, although I do think these are unintentional things to display as they don't really serve much to show. That's literally it. I'm speechless. This scene is so overly vivid, you cannot label into a simple emotion of the feeling you get from this scene. I think this really goes to show the atmosphere GTA 6 brings to the table. Something no one talks about, but everybody knows is how literally every GTA game has their own atmosphere. A few notable examples are GTA 3's Dark Blue Haze, which actually has an entire video essay written about his gloomy style. I'll leave that in the description below. Vice City's pinkish purplish vibe thanks to the palette of its UI and city. San Andreas's iconic orange haze. GTA 4 is even more orange haze. And GTA 5's very white, bright, and gained atmosphere. GTA 6 seems to be a game with a really saturated and vivid atmosphere. All of that said, this right here is a better view of the keys. As you can see here, there are smaller cargo boats than what we saw previously. Hopefully they're drivable. This fat
Matt Albert, a drug trafficking blimp. This bridge is a rendition of the Bahia Honda rail bridge with a little lip on the end, likely telling us to drive off of it for a stunt jump. These bridges are actually very long, and so it seems that either South and possibly Central Florida are going to be very oddly smushed, or the map is not going to be a perfect square like in Red Dead Redemption 2. Water is a vast improvement than in GTA 5, with it shifting and blending everywhere, also allowing you to see through it from this distance all the way up here. It actually looks like the depth of the water affects the coloration of it, as certain regions will likely have more transparent water than others, as well as the ocean floor being filled with sea life. Although plants are pretty blurry, they seem very accurate to the area. Red Dead Redemption 2 definitely helped make swampy plant assets for the Everglades. However, they were probably tweaked and adjusted for tropical plants. The foliage and water coloration here just overall perfectly resembles Rockstar's island theme map design, which doesn't exactly work in Los Santos. This scene just shows how huge this map truly is to have freeways running in all sorts of directions nowhere near a city. A really cool thing to notice just from how grandiose this whole thing is, is that there's an entire cloud covering this little island, like a fourth of what we're seeing here. Also, I'd just like to point out from this plane right here on how cool it looks when it gleamed from the sun, and that you could actually see the smoke coming out of this plane. Finally, I'd love to break your heart once more to show you yet another rendering bug from this trailer, as part of the freeway clips within itself trying to perform on low render distance. Like with the second club scene, I don't really got much to say about this. And also, all the info I can find about the scene is either, I wonder if this woman is Lucia, or they're about her titties. Whoever this woman is, she's wearing Sasanta Nove, a luxury brand seen in GTA 5. The woman in the water show character and object reflections around the scene, and a helicopter is parked on top of this building that will be able to have one of these readily available to steal climbing on top of it. Again, barely anything to say here. This is the welcome sign to the incoming flight to the VCI airport, also with us being able to see the air traffic control tower over there in the bottom left. Snapmatic is back with a new design. At least that's what I'm assuming this is. It seems to be a sort of parody of TikTok if I'm looking at it right. Since Rockstar devotes a lot of the trailer as a sort of montage to this TikTok-like platform, hopefully we're going to be able to clip our own experiences and post it to whatever this is. These flags wave in slightly different directions, showing that the wind is in a straight, perfect, linear force. Poach stands for Protection of Animals and Controlled Hunting, which it says in the profile pic, which is funnily enough an ironic acronym as poaching means to illegally hunt on someone else's property. It's also really funny that this guy, fighting with an alligator in such a comedic way, is part of a PSA to stay alert for them. As you can see here, the stick reacts and bends realistically as the weight of the alligator is manipulating its movement. There's a huge chance that this is the house from the Definitive Edition, kind of approving the rumor that it was a GTA 6 easter egg after all. The amount of very tree and plant types you can see in just this one garden alone is wild. And this is the first GTA game where grass actually looks like grass! Over here we can see a beach ball moving realistically in the water with also being able to see its effects on the water with its little ripples and waves. Apart from the two gargantuan melons we obviously see in the screen, let's focus on everything else. This area is a bus stop. This is something that fundamentally blew me away. Personally, as someone who loves seeing people get flown by cars while retards drive donuts in public areas, I was so glad to see that takeovers will finally be in GTA 6. The smoke here really shows attention to detail in particular and volumetric effects. The restaurant's phone number on the top right has an area code of 305, a nod to Florida's actual area code 305. Over here, people are watching from the balcony, and on the ground near the cars, people are filming the event in true takeover fashion. These women appear to be rappers and fur to be promoting a song with the Snapmatic livestream. These two women are likely Young Miami and JT from Miami Rapper City Girls. This is yet again another example of Rockstar programming light pollution with the unnatural way of how the clouds are colored contrasted to the sky. Also, this building has different colored lights. This right here is a great example showcasing GTA 6's new interiors, with shelves packed with products, a bakery display, and a lottery ticket counter. You can see how these things aren't arranged completely perfectly, not being all uniform like in GTA 5. And these plastic packaged items also reflect off the characters and their surroundings too. What is this level of detail? Also, the entrance has a dirty floor as people are constantly going in and out of the shop. In the surroundings, you can see a guy filling his truck with fuel, someone calling 911, someone filming, and this guy in the back just realizing what's going on. This scene hopefully implies that animals will invade certain areas like this liquor store. Speaking of this liquor store, they're advertising some breakfast for $2. Looking at the brands around here, there's a lottery brand which says there's a new billionaire every week, and Pibwasser could barely be seen in the top left corner. Finally, I'd just like to mention how much I love how this entire scene is distorted a little and desaturated to match the effect of CCTV footage, as well as the little glitch effect on the text on the top left. As you can see here, live body cam footage has metadata. They parodied body cam videos with date, code, and hour along with a rendition of the Axon logo. On top of that, they've also nailed the camera effects with this wide-angle FOV and slight blurs around the edges of objects. There is a sign that says Beware of the Dog with Chop in it, a little easter egg from Rockstar. This scene looks like some sort of undercover police busting an apartment, which may also hint to missions with a police body cam. A neat little detail to add too is that the wood breaks when the door is kicked open. As you can see here, an officer of the Leonard County Sheriff Department is chasing a butt-ass naked man. Leonida Man is a play on words on Florida Man which pokes fun of news reports of a Florida man doing wacky and zany things. Planet Leonida Man sounds 
like some sort of account which reposts videos like this daily, like something you might see on Instagram and Twitter. There's a new gas station company called Arrow, and here you can see the Sand King XL returning to the game. As you can see here, there is a small fishing boat which looks like a rib on the back of this naked guy's truck. In the distance, you can see a guy filming what he's seeing, while someone else is just blissfully unaware of the fuckery going on behind him. Lastly, something I like to point out is the glitch effect on this phone recording, which is a pretty interesting detail to add to say the least. This scene appears to depict an NPC grabbing his balls while attempting to taunt another NPC who is posting this on Snapmatic. Deriving from this information, we can probably say that getting into a non-fatal accident will cause an NPC to rage, yell, or give rude gestures to you as a result. This scene also depicts the variety of NPCs, this one having a phone holster, rubber boots, tattoos, random markings on his arms, and a tan. Alright, now let's take a look at the background. There appears to be a lot of highways in here. This, all the way over here, appears to be a parody of Florida's Sun Pass System Toll Road logo. Since the Interstate 404 is a toll road in Florida, which runs from the I-95 to A1A between Cocoa Beach and Melbourne Beach, right by the Kennedy Space Center, it'd be so crazy to just fly out the rock in natural disaster survival style, like GTA 6's version of Fort San Kudo. Since Interstate 404's first digit is even, it implies this is a route that loops back to its parent route. And so, the last two digits implies that Interstate 4 is its parent route. Therefore, this freeway will likely be based on Florida Route 112 and Interstate 195. Back to the more obvious foreground, there's a billboard that reads, Have you seen this man wanted for panty sniffing? 1-800-BAD-GUYS. This implies that calling this number may work in the game and will probably hire you a shitty attorney. I don't know. This car over here is also interesting. This car is the Ruiner, confirming that it will make a comeback in GTA 6. The inside of the door here shows a custom interior, meaning that every car may have its own. Also, an interesting customization choice by Rockstar is that this specific car has tape holding it together. On the left-hand side, we can notice water realistically spraying off of the tires. In the far distance, you can see two smoke trails, likely referencing planes that have flown into the airport. The zooming of the phone's camera here is very realistic, as well as some subtle motion blur. Lens flare captured by the phone's camera does not zoom in with it. Rather, it acts as an independent object, moving slowly compared to the camera's movement. Here, a man is sagging way too much. Yet another example of bumper stickers seen over here is in this window too. This car seems to have two stickers named Vice Vinyl along with hashtag Rideout Customs and whatever Crosstown means. On the left, there's a sticker that says Wrap It Like It's Hot and what appears to be a Snapmatic handle on the bottom. In the background, you can see the aging and health of different trees. This motherfucker hasn't drank shit since the War of 1812. This car has unbelievable attention to detail with the water and dirt sprayed on it. Like, look how this shit be glimmering. The side mirrors here show that mirrors may have water droplets on them and still reflect realistically. Something interesting about this car is that you can see the keyholes, potentially meaning this is something we need to pick in order to enter the vehicle. And finally, this man is wearing a red bandana, which could be a reference to the Cuban gang in GTA Vice City. Ignoring the old man's ass sticking out, you can tell how detailed Rockstar made skin in this game with what appears to be a sunburn on his back. In the background, you can see an above ground pool as well as potentially being able to look through people's houses in this game. For the weather, you can barely smidge out raindrops in the water, meaning that it's raining while also being partly sunny outside. This just goes to show how Rockstar is going to implement more diverse and advanced weather systems in this game. Now, I originally thought Thrillbilly Mud Club was like a TV show or something in the GTA universe because of how the logo is set up. However, I don't notice any scan lines as seen in the upcoming news reports of this trailer, so this is just left up for interpretation. On second guess, I think this is a club Rockstar is showcasing which you're going to have missions and or side missions involved with. On the right side of the screen, you can spot a Liberator monster truck, along with a man on the left side of the screen wearing a t-shirt of the truck. As the Liberator is passing through, it causes a bow wag as you can see it pushing the water out the way as well. Just looking at the scene over here really shows how off-roading and specialist vehicle events will play a big part of the automotive side of GTA 6. Peeking in the background, we can see porta potties, a monster truck flying in the air, someone diving into the muddy water, someone falling off the Liberator truck, and what appears to be a farm in a hill way into the distance. Lastly, from the scene, you can see how mud behaves much more accurately than in Red Dead Redemption 2, sticking into clothing and skin, as well as us being able to see a lot of trash on the floor. Anyway, not much to point out for the scenery. You can see in the background there's a few dark stains in the steps of the staircase, some damaged breeze blocks, and weeds seeping out of the cement, adding some more realism to the game. Also, it looks like Rockstar has acknowledged the difference between lighting in the real world and lighting from phones, as this appears to be some sort of low light filter in the game. This scene appears to be depicting an outdoor concert and or tailgate party. This man is holding a cerveza baracho beer, and it's just overall another example of NPC's advanced socializing system in this game. Everyone is wet for some reason. Lighting is a game changer in this particular scene as you can see the red lights off camera from the right affecting the ambience of the overall environment. There's a noticeable particle system which might collide with things, making liquids behave more realistically, as well as objects seeming to be rendered individually as they are able to be moved. And finally, there appears to be a mud hill in the background, probably for monster trucks to do tricks, I don't know. Leonard County Police are back at it again, and by the right side there appears to be a shopping mall of some sort called Evergreen something of somewhat shoes or stores, with stores Fernando T something, Kowalski, Kala, Scala, this, that, mid... <laughs> Alpha, and I can't read the rest. There's an advertisement for an antidepressant called Angstapain with the catchphrase, it cures emotions, and the slogan, America's favorite dissociative. The description reads as such, patients 15 to 40 use with extreme caution. Sudden urge to blink may be life-threatening.
life-threatening. Call your doctor if emotion lasts more than four hours. Results may vary. There is a crazy amount of detail on Jason's wrist over here, with not only veins visibly popping out, but also his hand and his bones flexing as he's stretching it. The leather on Lucia's seat is very detailed and subtly defined with its imperfections, looking like its grooves are three-dimensional instead of a flat texture. The bills on Lucia's hand appear to be individually rendered, saying the United States of Paranoia. Finally, there's a sticker in the car's windshield that reads Arrow something. Just like I mentioned before, there are scan lines in this scene, meaning that it is confirmed that this is a segment from TV. Over here, Weasel News appears to make a comeback, reporting on a man flipping his car from a dining dash, which likely means that this will be a random event, while also referencing a new restaurant chain named Pee Wee's. Here you can see someone getting dragged from the back of a car with the water being spilled from these yellow containers. The debris of this road is more in line with the nature of the car accident, with bits of glass and plastics all over the place. Here, you can also see the wheels bent inwards, likely referencing some vehicle physics similar to what we had in GTA 4, with car deformation being a lot more realistic. Also, you can see the barrier over here being deformed from the impact of the crash, something that isn't seen in GTA 5. Yet another news report from TV, this one coming from Mega Noticias, aka Mega Mundo. This description translates to, confession written in ink for tattoos. A tattoo on his neck gave himself away, key to the conviction of a Leonida man, which is just goofy as hell. It reads impertinent on his forehead, which I'm pretty sure it's supposed to say impenitent. Like the logo appears to be a yacht, a lady, a serpent, and a kid being eaten by an alligator. Most of these motorcycles are from Maibatsu, meaning the company will make a comeback in this game. You can also notice that the characters behave much more animated while driving, if you will, not being static and or stuck facing forward. Another Haitian flag can be spotted in this trailer, this time in the background, which belongs to a store named Jenny's Food Depot. Also, there appears to be a wanted sticker in this game, which is pretty cool. Now, this is likely the same motorcycle game that we just saw two seconds ago. For this scene, there is a lot of diverse NPC behavior, such as this person running around the road in fear, a man flipping off the car behind him, as well as us being able to spot both the comet in the middle of the intersection as well as a banshee behind the green truck on the top left. For the realism in this scene, you can find four unique types of cop cars, a sand path which seems to be naturally formed from the people walking on it, with the grass there detailed to notice the natural difference of coloration and height, and a pothole in the road. Looking at the news report, it is interesting to note that the time is still 1034 ET since the last Weasel News clip with the Dine and Dash accident. The gray bar over here confirms that water sprouts will be in the game, hopefully as well as other natural disasters, as well as a patient escaping from a mental hospital to win the Vice City Marathon on the run. This is probably based off of Rod Wave. I don't know, maybe it's big as the plug instead. High Rollers Lifestyle is probably yet another club we'll likely have missions with. However, I have no idea what I decided to put their Snapmatic handle as well. It's not like I can search that up now, we're not in 2025. Anyway, this scene is at best guess the start of a street race mission. As you can see, everyone joining together and parking their cars at a green light. This guy over here has a Righteous Slaughter Blood Opture, a parody of Call of Duty which has appeared in GTA before. Speaking of this shirt, we can see that clothes behave much more realistically in this game yet again, such as being able to see through his sleeve. On the left side of the screen over here, we can spot yet another cheap lawyer billboard. This one being one of those who hurt you billboards commonplace in big cities. Being someone who lives in Los Angeles, I see goofy shit like this all the time. Next to the billboard, we can find ourselves a street sign pointing north to a place called Waning Sands, which may be another beach location. This green car over here has the name of a car shop being advertised with a sticker raised by Ride Out Customs. It looks like a Chrysler 700, whatever the fuck that means. Its license plate is also customized, being the second license plate we've seen in this trailer with an animal on it. Anyway, focusing on the right side of the screen, this orange pickup truck has a milk crate full of vinyl records in the back, which tracks with its sound for sound sticker, as well as a vice vinyl sticker. Overall, it looks like there can be a possible inclusion of a record label to some extent, sort of like how it was an essential part of San Andreas' storyline-ish. Two other erratic details I just want to quickly point out here is that this orange building is a store, because of the 305 area code barely visible through the pickup truck's front window. And finally, this appears to be a PSA saying that either Soda kills yourself, or that someone named Soda needs to kill himself. After Jason and Lucia rob from the cash register behind them, they have the cash in their hand and quickly exit. Off the bat, you can find a lot of fishing supplies way in the background, along with some nets and rods potentially suggesting that we can fish in this game. Next to that is a CCTV camera, which hints to play an important role in this game as we saw in the leaks, where digital hacking equipment such as that with CCTV cameras specifically are mentioned. As Jason and Lucia walk through the store, you see a lot of brands making a comeback such as E. Cola with a redesign, Benedict Light Beer, Cesar Paracha, Lager Beer, Fat Chips, Richard's Whiskey, Nogo Vodka, and Pibwasser with a 9 alcohol free variant. As well, new brands can be spotted such as Flaming O's, a Cheeto spinoff, and Jester's, a Pringle spinoff. A reference to it is presumably Red Dead's legendary fish can be seen next to the fishing equipment. The roof tiles here aren't placed perfectly, making this look a lot less uniform and therefore more realistic than the liquor stores in GTA 5. Speaking about realism, there are a lot of things here you can expect to see in your average convenience store, such as jams, lighters, pins, containers, cliche flavored vodkas, as well as other random items. Probably the toughest thing to spot out in this scene is that Jason's hair appears to be dyed. So, Pawn and Gun seems to be a local weapon store in this game, located in Port Gelhorn. It describes itself as both a pawn shop and a gun store. Pawn and Gun can be a reference to that one guy from GTA 4 that found diamonds and wanted to go to Vice City to set up a gun store. Unlike Ammunition, where you're just free to buy any guns, Pawn and Gun says it requires a permit. Maybe in this game you need to get a permit in 
order to access the store or maybe since the store is locked behind one there are probably better guns to choose from here i don't know the store says it does diamonds cash loans silver gold jewelry and well yeah i know it's probably gonna be a long shot there's gonna be a diamonds currency in this game but i mean to trade look if you caught on what the current lore vote was shown in the trailer and especially the leaks you could tell that these motherfuckers are broke anyway i forgot to mention that there's another store next to the pawn and gun gun and pawn which serves the same purpose parked at the pawn and gun shop is a new g-class brabus benefactor and behind the store appears to be a house under construction also yet again with more weeds growing through concrete it's very nice to see a combination of different textures working together rather than just weeds grass concrete or tarmac as there's a hybrid of these materials to make it look more realistic along with this trash and leaves from the ground move according to jason's and lucia's car passing which they seem to be driving a tulip first introduced in gta online covered in bumper stickers those legible being an american flag a kosovo flag and a sticker that says arrest andrew with this clear glimpse of gta 6's driving physics we can say that it looks much more improved than gta 5's disaster of one when jason drifts lucia holds onto the door implying that this may be an animation that takes place while taking sharp turns there appears to be a store named whs we have shoes probably a parody of wss with the only shoe brand clearly being shown is one named Lebon. lastly i'm fairly interested in why there's a speed limit of 55 miles per hour on the street someone is consuming alcohol in this room here jason appears to have two scars one on his chin and the other on his eyebrow as well as his ear being pierced twice honestly an insane level of detail by rockstar this hotel cabin whatever it is over here is actually very likely essential to the game as it has been shown in the leaks in a few videos specifically when the player starts switching from jason to lucia my guess is that this is a temporary place that they stay in so there's a sticker here for uncle jack's liquor which has a similar design to jolly jacks from red dead redemption 2 the logo of uncle jack's liquor a man with a mustache is telling you to download their app implying some sort of ifruit store in gta 6 we know that this is the logo of uncle jack because the outside of the store is advertising a program with his face named uncle jack's loyalties with what appears to be the gta equivalent of two cents in this game being shown as well as you being able to earn a whopping five percent discount if you presumably join their program with all of this in mind you'll notice that these two separate stickers on the entrance of the store are actually meant to be seen together when you come in with this also being the entrance of some liquor store it's pretty obvious at this point that jason and lucia kick in in order to rob uncle jack's there seems to be some sort of radio station sticker another dignity ad an ad wanting you to take your best shot a new cerveza drink named pendejo a new lager beer drink named lager light drake a brand named rosaka saying we id a note that reads 10 pound ice bag two dollars and fifty cents with tax along with the coins mentioned earlier this pretty much confirms that money can be in decimals in gta 6 a petty forever sticker referencing to the song in this trailer love is a long road another note that reads we will no longer accept cash stored in underwear this sticker seems to show payment methods you can use in the store one of them i'm assuming being ifru pay confirming this is a method we can use for items in the game a third note that reads for your safety don't drink in the store some sticker referencing the illuminati and finally a sticker referencing a drink named thaw probably a parody of that dog shit disgrace of a liquid white claw inside the store you can see a drink named zesta outside the store you can find a truck loaded with boxes and garbage bags next to that some pib Wasser nine packs as well and the last thing to note for the last scene of this trailer is that uncle jacks has an a grade rating now time to list other uncategorized things i also wanted to point out first off snapmatic we can see here that there's going to be some sort of snapmatic reels feature notice how each video is covering the screen completely which functions both vertically and horizontally pretty obvious to note by now but the snapmatic logo has updated to parody the modern instagram logo a like button implies that you can at the very least save videos somewhere to view later a comment button implies you can see other npcs comments or maybe even other gta users comments but most importantly the follow feature implies that snapmatic will become a fully fledged platform with its own custom homepage whether it's as simple as showing who you're following now let's talk about all the real life references seen in this trailer aside from places where the map is based on this scene with the jet skis passing by cargo is inspired by the introduction of the unrated version of the movie miami vice the scene with a guy fighting an alligator is inspired by a news report from an alligator being removed from a swimming pool with the scene of a woman throwing ass while on top of a car is inspired by a 2017 viral video of the same thing happening in miami the scene of an alligator appearing in a random convenience store is inspired by a viral prank video in which a man asked for beer while running around with an alligator in his arms the scene where a naked guy runs around the street while being chased by cops is inspired by a news report where a naked guy runs around the street while being chased by cops the scene where an old man has his ass cracked singing out is inspired by a news report of another old man doing yard work naked interestingly when called on by the cops they said it was a-okay and legal as long as he stuck around with his dick out on his own property the scene where a woman says look who's back is inspired by a news report of an old lady on drugs armed with two hammers she says some racist shit in this video which eventually gets her confronted and the more i look into this situation the wilder it gets now turn that motherfucking hose off bitch Shut up your fucking ass! You understand me, bitch? Yeah, you probably already know that this is the Florida Joker based off of various news reports with him in it. But basically, he dropped out of middle school to do drugs and video games, and he's been semi somewhat viral a few times from 2017 to now doing actics while on drugs, mainly. You might know him now because he attempted to sue Rockstar when this trailer dropped for money, and now he's wanting to collab with Rockstar for money. He's almost 35 living with his mom, and uh, yeah, just a strange situation with the individual. And finally, the scene with the motorcycle gang popping wheelies in the middle of traffic is inspired by the same thing happening in the news report and really finally the last thing to note for this video
video is that the trees in the ending logo are dynamic. Thank you so much for watching my biggest project yet. I'll be posting daily gaming content from now on, and that's it. See you tomorrow. Only thing that I lean is your bitch when I bend her over. Sipping Poland Spring in Arizona. Fuck a Coca-Cola. That's your Juliet? Oh, that's cool. I'm a Romeo, huh? You think you a demon till I G you like I'm Tomioka. I be telling them shit. They don't listen to me. They just fuck with the flow.